There was once a man living in Baldur's Gate. He was a proud dwarf, sporting a majestic beard and long flowing hair that was the pride of his people. His hygiene and hair care routine gathered some popularity, so much so that he opened his own barbershop, which became famous across all of Faerun. He was known as a master of his craft, running his barbershop for years. He worked on clients of all kinds, from the highest of nobles to the most common of folk. He always looked to put a smile on the face of his customers, and had become so knowledgeable about the goings-on and gossip of the city that he could hold a conversation with anyone. He brought laughs and merriment to whoever entered his shop, and there was no client who entered that didn't look better when they left. His guarantee. One day, though, it all changed. A client came in, a meek, harmless old woman. She asked him for a simple styling, nothing he hadn't tackled before. Hundreds of times. He had got to work, but no matter how hard he tried, he couldn't get the look right. Hair seemingly grew back as soon as it would cut, as soon as it was cut, it would change colour on a whim. Any attempts to alter the hair were done in vain. He had to admit defeat. A dark grin crept across the woman's face. She declared that he didn't uphold his guarantee, and had failed to satisfy a client. The first time it had happened in years. The woman's form shifted and contorted into the true form of a devil. And that devil cursed him that day. His long, luscious hair and that trademark beard that he prided himself on were gone. He was bold. And it wasn't going to grow back. The rumours spread. His reputation faltered. He couldn't even bear to show himself in public. He left Baldur's Gate in search of a way to end the curse. As he travelled the land, he took odd jobs giving haircuts to people all over. A few towns here, a village there. But despite his shame, he still brought happiness to those he worked with, wherever he went. This garnered the attention of something. Something powerful. As he travelled the Faerun Wilds, on an old, long-forgotten road, he came across a formless being. It spoke to him telling him how it had been watching his exploits. They, whatever it was, saw through his facade, at the underlying sadness that hid behind each smile. They wanted to help, or so they say. The barber struck a deal with this creature, a pact, if you will. Power, in order to find the devil who cursed him, end them once for all, in exchange for a symbiotic relationship to allow the creature to take form in this realm. They would live off of the life essence of the barber, granting them power in exchange for their lifespan. But what form would this creature take? Why, what else other than a long, beautiful, amazing, luscious beard? <laughs> For those of you who said you wanted a bit more narrative of my build, some background lore, um, there you go. <laughs> Hello, uh, all, uh, all right. Hello, yes. Welcome back to another build. Uh, I can't believe I just did that. <laughs> okay, for context of those of you who don't know, it's become kind of a channel meme, especially on my live streams, for characters to just have beards. And on my live stream where we were doing, I think it was part three of my honor mode playthrough, we, we, we got into like an hours long debate about like beards and such. And then we were discussing, you know, making a beard build and all that sort of thing. And then on my last live stream, which was the build theory crafting live stream where I took build requests and we kind of theory crafted builds for future videos uh, on the channel as a chat as a collective it was so fun if you don't if you ever get a chance to make it to one of these live streams please do we have a ton of fun over there and of course the very first build that had to be built was 
the beard build. So here it is. I understand that this isn't exactly going to be a popular video or something that like a lot of people are going to really care about, but it is really, really important to the members of, of our close community. So I absolutely had to give a little bit extra. And as such, you got that kind of background intro, which we did also kind of come up with the basic concept on the stream as well. If you want the full context, kind of the first hour of my last live stream, which was again the Fairy Crafting stream, kind of covers the whole build making process. So if you wanted to, if you want to go and see that to get the full context, uh, there is a VOD on the channel. Otherwise, let's get into the actual build. So, what, how this is going to work? Basically, this is kind of like a melee ranged DPS. It's kind of an all arounder type deal that does a lot of things. It's it's good at being the face of the party. It's good at dealing a lot of damage. It has a lot of technical aspects. It's going to be quite fun. We mainly decided to build around this weapon here because this weapon has a very specific link to this build, and we'll get to that um, with the equipment towards the end. But we also kind of wanted to do a lot of like trickster kind of stuff. As you in the lore, I kind of said that the uh, this guy has got like a lot of like you know um, you know a lot of charisma. He does a lot of talking, a lot of you know a lot of comedy. He even does a bit of singing. He's like one of those like barber quartet type things. You know that classic thing. Uh, so he's going to be a bard, but because obviously he's made a pact with this creature of the woods, he is also a warlock, and that will get even more context and will make more sense as well as we kind of go through the build. So I'll, I'll go through my sort of explanations as we go, but let's just get into it. Sorry for this incredibly long intro. Build starts now. So. We're kicking things off as a fighter. This is specifically because we decided as a collective that we wanted a specific type of armor to give us a specific type of ability. And as such, we needed heavy armor proficiency, which works out nicely for this build anyway. And also starting off as fighter is going to give us weapon proficiency, which we want. And uh, constitution saving throw proficiency, which is going to be nice because this build is quite concentration heavy. We're also going to get a fighting style, which means we're going to get great weapon fighting, which we absolutely want. This is perfect for this build. And also, since obviously we're using a halberd, that works out quite nicely. As for our stats, this is what we're working with here. We've gone with a 17 in charisma. And yes, we are going to be using Ethel's Boon to bump this up to an 18. Now, with the lore I just gave, you may think, wow, is this guy really going to take a deal with a hag after a devil screwed him over? This dude let a ancient formless fey creature attach himself attach itself to his face as a beard in order to gain power yes he would make a deal with a hag fight me uh so yes we're having 17 charisma we're bumped up to an 18 with ethel's boon wisdom at 10 because it's our kind of not quite dump stat constitution at 16 because we don't need it as we need it we don't need dexterity as much so i've left that at 14 and constitution at 16 is going to make us quite nice in a frontline combat as for our skill proficiencies i've just gone with perception and survival because again i think survival he was out on the road quite a lot makes sense and perception you have to be quite perceptive to i guess make hair look good I don't know. We've also got Insight and Persuasion because we're a guild artisan, which made sense. His art and craft is being a barber. It's hair. It's hairdressing. Makes total sense. I would have loved sleight of hand proficiency on this build because that just makes sense for the fine cutting, cutting action of a barber. But we can't get that yet. <laughs> we'll get it later. Right, next up at level 2, we're going to be going straight into our next... Our, one, our, bleh, we're going to get straight into our main classes because as much as it would be nice to have action surge and you can totally grab it if you want I want features from other classes more now the level progression in this build is a bit weird we decided there was a lot of different things we wanted on this character and so you're going to have to pick and choose what is more important to you to grab first I'm personally going to be going for warlock and then bard but you might think you want to like basically go warlock all the way and then go bard all the way but you might think actually i want three levels of warlock and three levels of bard and then back and forth it's up to you i'm just going to show uh the kind of full multi-class progression in order but feel free to level level up these characters however you would like this build unfortunately it isn't going to feel a hundred percent full power until you kind of get to the very late levels of the game but once it gets there it's pretty fun but let me go into it now we're going to be going into Warlock first. I feel like that's pretty obvious. So we want to get this quite early because it is pretty integral to our character. As for our cantrips, I'm going to pick Eldritch Blast and Friends. This is fairly standard. We're playing a Warlock. We might as well grab Eldritch Blast for the utility. And Friends makes a lot of sense for this build. As for our subclass, I kind of already made 
said it, but we're going with the Archfey. This is going to give us a couple of things. Number one is Fey Presence. We can charm or frighten nearby foes with the Fey Wilds beguiling disturbing magics. I actually believe that because your beard is so otherworldly and luscious and beautiful that it charms nearby enemies just by looking at it. <laughs> Again, this is all stuff we came up with, in, with uh, on these live streams. Seriously, if you want to be a part of this stuff, please join the live streams. Um... As for our spells, there was a couple that kind of came up that chat that the community really wanted. I should stop just saying chat. You're more than just text in a box. You're a community. This is what the community kind of came up with. Arms of Hadar flavoured as hair growing out of your beard to grab and attack enemies with necrotic damage. Kind of fun. Also, I, this is a personal choice of mine. Charm person would work, but again... Unless you're playing on a mode, I find it not to be as useful as just taking friends. So I'm going to leave it here, although it would make sense. But I quite like Fairy Fire as well, just because I think it's quite a nice utility spell that lets you be a bit of a team player. As for Warlock level 2, we get to pick our Invocations. And there's a couple that I would like. Obviously, we're going to be taking Agonizing Blast. We have Eldritch Blast. We might as well. And then, I mean, none of these other ones really make sense. Beguiling Influence would, but we already have Persuasion. And we could pick up Deception later. So it's kind. it would be kind of a wasted slot. Uh, if you decide you don't want to go Heavy Armor, Armor of Shadows might be nice. Beast Speech could be good if you want it early, but we can get that from Bard later. So again, it's not too mu not too great. Devil's Sight is kind of eh, it's up to you. Uh, but let's say I'm going to just go with Repelling Blast because I think that makes sense. Uh, as for our spell, so we'll take whatever you like. It really doesn't matter. I'm personally going to probably I'm going to pick Sleep. I don't know. It feels fame magic-y to pick Sleep. Also, I will point out we are playing as a Dwaygar here, but it's not like I'm not saying this build has to be like Dwaygar-esque in like you know, the way it acts, because obviously I haven't designed this guy like a Dwaygar, right? I more wanted the Dwaygar's racial abilities to kind of play into the chaotic fey element of everything, so getting a large and per basically permanent invisibility would be kind of fun on a build like this, so I've decided to go with the Dwaygar here, but I'm not playing this like they are a Dwaygar, if that makes sense, but we do get enlarge at total level 3, allowing us to grow in size and become stronger, giving our weapon a bit more reach and a bit more damage. It's definitely worth grabbing. So, yeah, let's keep going. At Warlock level 3, we are going to get our pack to Boon, and this one is obvious. And I know it's the lame, boring, overdone choice, but Pact of the Blade gives us everything we want. It is going to allow us to use our Charisma for the attack and damage rolls on our main weapon, which is this bad boy here. So, we definitely want to pick it up. Uh, Pact of the Chain or Pact of the Tome just don't do enough for us here, but I am going to be doing builds with these two in the future. And I've done plenty of builds with Pact of the Tome and a couple with Chain, but I actually really want to focus to see if I can make Chain not shit. So, we'll see. Uh, but yeah, we definitely want pi bi Bind Pact Weapon here. We're not really going to be using the actual Pact of the Blade feature, but in the early game where you're a bit skint for good weapons, it can definitely come up. As for our level 2 spells now, we do get a couple, and I really want... Hold person. If this man sees someone with a beard who is using their powers for evil, Thorm, he will hold, make them hold still and shave them clean. <laughs> that was, again, another thing we came up with on stream. It's dumb. Just roll with it. Next up at Warlock level 4, we are going to be getting our first feat, and I've decided to take advantage of the fact that we have a Halberd here, and the fact that we can kind of manipulate our stats with Ethel's Boon and items. We're actually going to be taking two feats with this build that are not ability score improvements. I feel like all of our stats are going to be a good, in a good place by the end of this build regardless, so let's get a little bit power buildy with it. Here we have Pole Arm Master. When attacking with a Glaive, Halberd, Quarterstaff or Spear, you can use a bonus action to attack with the butt of your weapon. You can also make an opportunity attack when a target comes within range. Uh, basically, this is just going to give us a bit more to do with our po with our uh, uh, weapon each turn, basically guaranteeing that we always have a bonus action attack, which is quite nice, and an extra opportunity attack using our reaction. Now, this, used, this um, feat used to be bugged. I'm not exactly how, but in my testing... It seemed to be working as intended, so as far as I understand it is fixed, but let me know if I'm wrong. 
If it is still bugged in some shape or form and you're not satisfied with it, feel free to change this out for something else. But for now, I quite like going Polearm Master. Now, as for our cantrips, we get to pick a cantrip, and while we are going to be getting this a different way later, I might pick it up now, we're going to get Blade Ward. Blade Ward is going to give us slashing resistance, which means our beard is not going to get trimmed unexpectedly. Again, the chat demanded I get slashing resistance somehow. There you go. <laughs> we'll get it a different way later as well, but whatever. Let's just keep going. And next up for our level two, another level 2 spell, I want Enthrall. We want to reduce a cr creature's peripheral vision to make it look at us. They just cannot look away from our spectacular beard. This is one of the dumbest builds I've ever done. <laughs> it's up there. It's up there with, like, the Scooby-Doo stuff and freaking Walter White the Acid build. <laughs> um... At Warlock level 5, we're going to be able to get Deepened Pact, which lets us uh, get an extra attack with our Pact weapon. Awesome. We're not going to be getting the whole extra attack stacking thing, uh, this build, but that doesn't work on the load anyway, so who cares? Run this build on the mode. Because <laughs> you totally can. Uh, we do get a third invocation here, and honestly, it can be whatever you like. Like I said, it really doesn't matter. Uh, any of these will work, but Devil's Sight, I guess, can come in handy in a lot of situations where, especially in, like, certain char related temples, perhaps, uh, where darkness becomes a bit of an issue, so this can help with that. And as for our spells, we do get access to level 3 spells at this point, and I want plant growth, but it's not plants growing up out of the ground, it's hair, and that hair is going to make creatures only able to move with a quarter of their movement speed, giving you a ton of battlefield control. Oh my god, I'm, I'm giggling to myself the whole way through this, because, again, it's just so dumb, but it's fun. And I really hope I'm doing this justice for everyone who wanted it. Now, as much as I would love to have Misty Escape from level 6, I want other stuff from Bard more, so we're heading over there now. Bard is going to give us a few things. Obviously, we want Vicious Mockery because it's bloody Vicious Mockery. And Va Mage Hand, I think, is quite nice for a build like this. Because, again, I can see this guy. He was in the barber shop grabbing all his utensils with Mage Hands to like kind of be a bit more efficient and have a bit more flair. You know, stuff like that. As for our spells, I feel like these ones are going to be quite obvious. Dissonant Whispers, allowing us to use our voice to frighten enemies, kind of leaning into that Fey thing, but also the fact that this guy, you know, knows how to use his voice. Uh, we're also going to go for Tasha's Hideous Laughter. Again, this guy was quite the comedian, was able to make people laugh. Now, he forces them to. Uh... As I said before, we might as well pick up Speak with Animals because it's quite nice, and Longstrider can help out with our stubby little dwarf legs, although we will be getting a more permanent version of this later so we don't have to keep reapplying the spell, so you might want to take something else like Charm Person if you feel like that's on theme or Featherfall for the utility, but it's entirely up to you. At Bard level 2, we're going to be able to get Jack of All Trades, allowing us to add half of our proficiency bonus to any ability checks we are not proficient in, and Song of Rest giving us a third short rest. Very useful on Honor Mode. I've mentioned Honor Mode a few times now. Is this my first actual Honor Mode build? Huh. Why not? As for spells, we do get another spell at this level, and I'm just going to go ahead and take Charm Person, because I keep skirting around it, but you know what? Let's just get it. It makes sense for the build like this. You charm people with your beard. It makes sense. At Bard level 3, we get to pick our Bard College. And you may be thinking, what Bard College could possibly satisfy a build like this? And chat's general consensus was College of Law. I don't remember exactly why we went with College of Law, but I think it's cool. Again, it's using our voice, and I actually found it to be very useful on a build like this. Because believe it or not, cutting words is actually going to have a decent amount of synergy with this build in a weird way that I don't think myself or chat ever ex or, or the community ever expected. So let's get into it. Cutting words allows you to use your bardic inspiration to basically um, take a make your opponent take a penalty to a roll equal to your bardic inspiration die. It's literally the reverse of what bardic inspiration usually does, and it's going to help out quite a bit. But because we're going with College of Law Bard, we're also going to get three proficiencies and two expertise. So I'm going to pick up Sleight of Hand, because again, that's the barber's thing. We're also going to go with Performance, allowing us to use, well, Performance, uh, because, you know, we're a bard, might as well. 
And I'm also going to grab... What else did I think I was going to grab? I can't remember. Uh, I think I grabbed nature because that kind of leans into the Fae thing, but and the fact that he used to travel quite a lot, again, going with survival as well. It's entirely up to you, though. Use that last slot for whatever. Maybe intimidation would be the smarter option. Uh, and as for our expertise, I quite like having advantage in persuasion. Again, you are quite charming. Uh, expertise in persuasion, my apologies. I thought we did get advantage with that on friends, but, you know, whatever. Uh, but I'm also going to take uh, expertise and sleight of hand. Again, we're good with our barber's tools. And as for our spells, we do get another level 2 option here, and we have quite a few of these already thanks to Warlock, so I'm going to go a Crown of Madness. Some people, when they look at your beard, they just cannot comprehend the beauty that is in front of them. It's almost eldritch in nature, causing them to go mad that such a beautiful form can exist. <laughs> oh my days, I'm, I'm going to be laughing throughout this whole video just to myself. Right. At level 8 or 4 of Bard or whatever we're at now, level 10, there we go. We get to pick another feat, and I'm going to go with, where is it, Great Weapon Master. Yes, we're actually doing a Polon Master, Great Weapon Master build, a powerhouse staple in D&D, making its way into one of my build videos, finally. Whenever we land a critical hit or kill a target with a melee weapon attack, you can make another melee weapon attack as a bonus action that turn. So this could be a more powerful version than our Polom Master bonus attack, but it's a bit more situational. However, we will always have a bonus action attack thanks to Polom Master. This is just a beefier version when it comes up. Attacks with melee weapons you are proficient with, which we will be, uh, because we took level fighter, and our wielding in both hands can deal an additional 10 damage at a cost of negative five attack at a, at a cost of a negative five attack roll penalty. You can toggle this on and off. So you're gonna have to pick and choose when is the best time to get that extra damage, but when it hits, it hits hard. You'll see in the combat footage. As for our cantrips, we do get another one. And you know what? This is a meme build. Best cantrip in the game. And Finally, we do get another level 2 spell, and I can't believe I didn't pick this one earlier, actually, because I meant to. We're going with Cloud of Daggers. We can now magically send out our Barber's Utensils to conjure a cloud of spinning scissors and clippers that attack anyone inside, dealing a little bit of extra damage. We have to maintain concentration on this one, and we do technically have better concentration options, but there's no way I could not pick this. I'm pretty sure uh, someone in the community also requested that we take this spell. At Bard level 5, we're going to get a couple of really good things for Bard. We're going to get a uh, font of inspiration, allowing our Bardic inspiration to now recover on a short rest as well as a long rest. And also, our Bardic inspiration die now increases to a d8, meaning that our cutting words feature from Law Bard can now take a d8 off of opponent's rolls, which is awesome. And now we do have access to level 3 spells, and I want Hypnotic Pattern. People are so enthralled by your beard that they are now completely hypnotized, even in groups. Pretty good. And finally, at Bard level 6, we get Counter Charm, which sucks, so let's move on. But we get Magical Secrets as a Law Bard. Now, a lot of people in chat were heavily requesting that we pick up Spirit Guardians on this build, just because it is quite a powerful option and is quite nice. Works nicely with a Halberd and such like that for kind of keeping enemies at bay, but still being able to damage them from long reach and, you know, you know, all the shenanigans that Spirit Guardians do. It's a really fun spell to get on a build like this where you normally wouldn't be able to, so why not? But my personal pick for our second magical secret spell is... Entangle. Grabbing, uh, you know, an enemy with our hair sprouting out, out of the ground. Grasping them with our beard and holding them still. It's dumb, I know, but I'm taking it. Screw you. Pick something else when you make this yourself, if you ever do. <laughs> And then finally, our last spell. Nothing here really speaks to me. I mean, we've kind of gotten all of the options that make sense. Uh, so I'm just going to pick whatever I want. Knock. I don't know why either. We're breaking into people's homes. Giving them haircuts. <laughs> And that is the build. Overall, you're going to get actually quite a lot out of this. You're going to get a ton of, you know, interesting uh, manipulation tactics, being able to control the battlefield with things like plant growth and fake presence to charm your enemies to prevent them from attacking you, attacking you. It, being able to hypnotize, frighten, uh, drive your enemies mad, use spirit guardians to, you know, um, 
you know, deal tons of damage, uh, being able to, you know, use friends to be the face of the party and such like that, uh, being able to use your bardic inspiration to both help your allies and hinder your enemies. You're going to have a ton of fun with this one, especially when you're throwing insults all around the battlefield with cutting words and vicious mockery. You're going to have a fun time. Definitely worth messing around with this build for sure. But where this build really starts to get into the nitty gritty of all the building that we were doing and like the law stuff and everything is the equipment and i'm going to get right into the most important article here the weapon salvaged from the beard of a dead infernal leviathan whose facial hair was formed from the weapons of an army it had once vanquished this is the hellbeard halberd I cannot believe this was in the game, and I didn't even know about it before we'd started discussing beards and shit as a meme. <laughs> the fact that this exists absolutely floored me when I found out. So, my justification is that when the uh, Archfey symbiote patron thing latched onto us and granted us power, they gave us this weapon that they stole from a realm far beyond our own. Probably the Hells, considering it's an Infernal. And as such, we now have this powerful, legendary weapon. It's a plus two Halberd, but has a flat six bonus poison damage on top of it. Uh, unfortunately, it, this is obtained in Act 3, so you are going to have to wait a little while before you are worthy to wield such a magnificent weapon. Or you could just mod it in. But... <laughs> Not everyone has that option. So another good option in Act 2 would be the Halberd of Vigilance or something like the Unseen Menace in Act 1 if you wanted to go with something like that in the meantime. But you're definitely going to want to work your way up to being able to use this weapon and prove you are worthy. Now, as for the other stuff, let's get into the equipment. First up is the Birthright Hat. This is what's going to allow us to bump up our Charisma to A20, despite not putting any ability score improvements into it. So, this plus our full spoon is going to get us a pretty solid Charisma stat, which is what we want. Now, because this uh, weapon is poison-based, we decided to kind of make this a bit of a poison build as well. Starting off with the Derivation Cloak. Whenever we poison a foe, we heal 1d4 hit points, which is pretty cool. Let's keep going. Armor of Persistence. Now, <laughs> the reason we decided that this is the armor we wanted to go for was because this gives us a constant blade ward, meaning that we always have resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage, meaning that our beard cannot be cut. But this also means that we have a 20 flat AC just from the armor. All incoming damage is reduced by two. We do have disadvantage on stealth checks, but who cares? We're loud and proud and ready to show our stuff. We will always... We will never be stealth with this build. Never. And because uh, we went with the armor of persistence, we decided to go with the boots of persistence to match, allowing us to gain freedom of movement and long strider, strider again, helping us with our stubby little dwarf legs. And most people just kind of went with these because they work well together, uh, fashion-wise. And I quite like the color options we went with here for this, but I've decided to keep them in camp clothing for now just because I want to. But if you want some solid options for earlier in the game, the Helldusk armor set will work quite nicely. And for boots, you can go with the boots of speed which will allow you to dash as a bonus action which will again help with your stubby little legs and the hell and the flawed hell dusk armor it says hell gloom ignore it uh, it's an early access name uh but the flawed hell dusk armor uh is just a really solid uh heavy armor that you can get in act two quite easily that has 18 ac and is going to give you a little bit less piercing damage dealt but really any heavy armor you come across is going to do you just fine uh, as for the accessory, oh no, we need to go to the gloves, the poisoner's gloves, whenever you deal poison damage, which for us is all the time, the target needs to succeed a constitution saving throw or become poisoned. Now, because they need to succeed a saving throw to not be poisoned, cutting words is going to basically allow us to get this off pretty much all the time. And, because, and if you don't know what the poisoned condition does, the target suffers disadvantage on attack rolls and ability checks, making us even harder to hit, even with our 20 AC, which is pretty nuts. Uh, this is just because I really wanted to have the poisoned uh, status condition on this build, so you can kind of sort this around as you want, but, you know, I actually quite like it. I think it works really nicely with this build. 
And of course, we're going with a classic poison combo. The Brood Mother's Revenge allows us to, whenever we are healed, become coated in magic and, and uh, deal an additional 1d6 poison damage with our attacks, which is pretty good. Combining this with the Ring of Regeneration to constantly heal uh, at the start of every turn, meaning we're going to constantly have this buff, meaning we're going to have an extra 1d6 of poison damage all the time, meaning that we also always have a higher chance to poison, even if we don't have this halberd yet, which is pretty good. Uh, and again, we're going to be constantly healing ourselves each time we poison a foe as well, which can also trigger this. So there's a lot of good stuff going on here. And our next ring is the Poisonous Ring, which allows you to use a unique class action called Virulent Venom. You can target up to three targets. It actually kind of works like Eldritch Blast in that regard. You can point your, fi your finger at these targets to have a chance to make them vulnerable to poison damage. Uh, you can use this once per long rest, so this is kind of your boss beta move. So uh, they have a chance to save against it, so you you want to cut basically, if you want to guarantee this is going to go off, fire all three beams at a single target, basically whatever boss you're fighting, to make sure that it happens, and then all of a sudden they're taking double poison damage, which is pretty damn good. Um, also, but it, this is also kind of a yeah, it's situational. Again, you mainly want to use this in big boss fights. So another awesome ring to have would just be the Whispering Promise, which whenever you heal, which we're doing a lot, you basically get Bless all the time, giving you a 1d4 bonus to attack and saving throws for two turns. So overall, I would say you can kind of choose what rings you want to use here. You might even think the Ring of Regeneration is not worth it if you're, poised, if you're getting enough healing off of this to trigger this. So it's entirely up to you. Play around with this and figure out what works for you. Now, obviously, we can include the Drake Throat Glaive in this build to get an to make this a plus three weapon and unfortunately we don't get a poison buff on this but we can do acid instead so i thought i'd just bring that up it's not essential to this build but it's kind of a staple for me to bring it up in pretty much every video now so why stop here and i'm pretty sure someone in chat just wanted me to bring it up as well community stop saying chat i uh, probably won't offend anybody but i don't know but anyways, <laughs> uh, we're also packing the Dark Shot Fire Shortbow, another staple of the channel. Uh, again, this is a build to kind of celebrate our community and this channel, so why not go for the channel staples for this build? Uh, this gives, gives us uh, a ranged damage option if for some reason we don't have access to our cantrips. Uh, it gives us resistance to fire and cold damage and lets us cast haste once per long rest, which will again just turn us into a melee Eldritch Blasting powerhouse anyway. Might as well get that extra bit of power on top of everything else. But again, this build is a bit concentration heavy, and you might not actually think haste is the best option all the time. Something like Spirit Guardians might be better, or heck, something like Hypnotic Gaze to just take a few enemies out of the fight for a little bit. But you can, but as long as you're not, haste is kind of a last concentration spell you cast in a fight, you can kind of switch up your concentration as you go. <laughs> so yeah, that is the build for combat footage we'll be playing now, and as you can see this build is a bit of a powerhouse. It is going to be doing lots of damage, inflicting lots of status conditions, but it's overall just quite fun to play. Anyway, um, again, this build isn't necessarily meant to be like a powerful build or something you might even actually go out of your way to build. It is just a celebration, well, yeah, let's say it's just a celebration. It is a celebration of everything this channel has become. We've hit 4,000 subscribers. The channel is more popular than it's ever been. Multiple videos these past couple of weeks have hit 10K. Uh, in fact, I say we just hit 4K subscribers. We're already past like 4,200 and climbing rapidly. Uh, the live streams are doing insanely well. The community is excellent. Like... I guess, in a way, this is my 4,000 subscriber special, if you wanted to call it that. And again, it's just a big thank you to, you know, everything you guys have done for me. Um, this channel, it's odd. It's given me a lot of self-confidence in myself, being able to chat with so many people and do something that people seem to enjoy. It's really kind of helped me... I guess, get over some stuff. I don't know. I won't get into too much detail here, but you guys have done a lot for me, and I really appreciate everything that this channel has become, uh, everything you guys do for it, and everything we do together as a community, and I feel like enjoying something and, you know, kind of getting in on an in-joke together and memeing around and just building this for fun and just having a fun time with something like this, uh, you know, it, it, it really means a lot to me, and I hope you got and i hope i did this build and this video and you know this meme this channel meme justice <laughs> um 
And as I said, uh, the, this channel is performing so well at the moment. It's growing fast, and that, again, I've said this before, it's a bit scary, but um, I'm interested to see what happens in the future. And, you know, while I, and I think I still want to keep this channel small. I mean, hell, <laughs> if I ever get to flip in, like, for example, like 10,000 subs or whatever, which will probably not happen, but I would probably just crumble under the pressure and just shut the damn thing down. <laughs> Abort. <laughs> ah, I don't know. But I'm going to probably end my ramblings here. I'll, I'll leave you with the combat footage. Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm just still kind of reeling over that stupid intro. <laughs> it, it's, I came up with a backstory for this stupid goddamn concept. <laughs> oh, man. I really, really hope you guys all enjoyed this video, and I will see you all next time. And thank you once again. Thank <laughs> you.